Now, I expected Overdress to feel a lot different from regular Vanguard from what we're used to until now, but I didn't expect the main thing that I would need to get used to would be my mulligan. What's good, everyone? And yes, as the title says, I did get to finally play with the five star decks for Overdress. Now, you might be wondering, but how? All the cards aren't even out yet. Well, last weekend, or I think about a week ago by now, they actually released a trailer for the starter decks where if you go by a frame by frame analysis, you get to catch the remaining cards that we haven't seen. And basically, the remaining cards for all the starter decks that haven't been revealed yet are a grade one or grade two vanilla, as well as the grade one perfect guard. And so basically, when you fill the gaps, so if you look at the lists of all the trial decks the starter decks you actually see that the only missing cards from each start deck was basically just their respective vanillas and the respective pgs if not less than that so the only other things were basically the front trigger and the draw trigger which we already know the ratios of in each deck and we also know from that trailer that the triggers do not have effect and so therefore we were finally able to sit down and play test with these starter decks to see first what does the package of the start deck you know the four dollar start deck what does it actually offer is it a complete playing experience or is it something they need to build up upon a lot relying on the booster set and also looking to see how overdress feels how does the ride deck feel how does the change ratios and the change like shield power and stuff like that actually feel how does persona ride feel and all those different things and so we basically sat down yesterday on my twitch stream with zistral from yellow card vanguard go give him a follow or a sub whatever you want to do uh that's the boy right there who helped me test these and so we sat down and tested them and i have a lot of thoughts after everything and so these are like from like 10 or 12 like a dozen games basically so my thoughts will evolve as we keep playing with these start decks and they'll evolve even more so once the booster set is actually out we can actually start playtesting more with complete decks so i've already like had to trim out some thoughts and so if you want like my raw thoughts on everything as it happened you can watch the vod on my twitch to see the entire experience but i'll also cut up all the different games and put them into one big video for you guys tomorrow morning so you have like one big video with timestamps between each different game so you can see all the different start decks in action and kind of get a feel for them keep in mind that like the vanillas the fronts the draws and the pgs were proxied with like other stuff so like for example, we use the new PGs from the booster set, but they were actually used as the regular PGs where they don't have the two cards or less in hand claws. And then like the fronts and draws, for example, were like from older V series stuff and things like that. So, you know, don't think about those too much, but they were just placeholders to give us the, you know, full on playing experience because we already know what those cards are from the trailer. So I'm going to split this up into three parts. First things first, I'm going to talk about the gameplay because I think that's probably the thing that we need to talk about the most right now. And then I'm going to talk about the start deck. So actually what they offer as a product, how each different start deck feels, where they kind of line up against each other, like in terms of power levels and stuff like that. And then finally, I'm going to talk about improvements. So things I want to see them improve upon with the booster set, as well as things that they've been doing right, that I want them to continue doing right as well going forward. So let's talk about the gameplay. And the first thing I want to talk about from the gameplay perspective is the mulligan. So the mulligan is really changed a lot from before you know you would open your five cards and you would make sure you have a grade one two three and then you would like you know put back triggers it was pretty simple overall you'd keep sometimes like some combo pieces and stuff like that but now because you already have your ride deck that has basically given you the safety of never being great stuck you can mulligan in any way you want whether it's keeping combo pieces for those specific turns like you know the final rush turn in dark states or what i found myself doing the most is just mulliganing for the persona ride because i noticed after a few games that being able to persona ride consistently game after game after game just felt like the most powerful thing that actually managed to sway those games and so i mostly felt like i was mulliganing for persona ride copies rather than anything else and then i would draw into anything else necessary along the game but it's having those persona rides that felt the most important like basically how you would like keep your grade one two three in your hand beforehand now it feels like you really want to have at least one persona ride in your hand to be able to like change the flow of battle on turn four the ride deck itself is fantastic there isn't much to comment on it because i think it's pretty obvious that it's great you know it makes sure that you don't don't get great stuck and things like that generally when it came to discarding cards to write from the right deck i either discarded draw triggers or i discarded like spare orders that i didn't need for that turn and things like that the thing that we kind of felt was especially during the first few games is that going first felt worse because going second you drew an extra card and you got an extra card from drive checking whereas going first you don't draw from the starter anymore and so that felt a little bit unfortunate i guess you can say but at the same time it's nice because it balances out you know going first you have more aggression and you can basically start going at your opponent a bit faster so I think overall that dynamic like we definitely it started to feel less bad to go first later on and it felt much more balanced out especially when you learn how to aggress better in the early game as well. Another thing that we kind of felt was that let's say one player like trigger sacks a lot early like checks double crit or something push the opponent to four while they're on one or like you know like just sacks triggers in general so that the other player gets punished for it. We felt that or at least I felt that in particular that persona riding over and over every turn counterbalances that so in an interesting way 
when your opponent sacks you, but then they don't persona right as much, but you do, you, that like push to your front row and the extra draw you get every turn kind of counteracts that you get to push back, whereas your opponent like their columns are never as big as yours and their hand isn't going to be as plentiful as yours either and they're going to be guarding more because your attacks are bigger whereas they got lucky in the earlier game i think the one thing right now is one thing that we talked about a lot on stream was that the card economy right now feels a little bit wonky in these starter decks because the shield powers have been reduced so like even the heals are 15k shield grade ones are 5k shield and but the attacking power has kind of remained the same as v's and so therefore like it's harder to guard stuff and some decks are able to ask for like two card guards for every single attack Attack, even in the starter deck and so the reason why it also feels kind of weird is because some decks don't have as much plusing so therefore they don't naturally have as much cards in hand to guard with and because the grade one shield power is lowered as well it's kind of like changing the way you perceive those two whereas in v they were part of your main defense cards that you wouldn't would only play down if they have really good effects on the board now it's like well they're only 5k shield so it doesn't really add too much to it and even then like your triggers are literally the main shields that you use in the game so i think that that needs to be kind of improved upon whether it's printing more like draw card effects so just like fill up your hand easier and therefore you have more cards to both put on the on the board and also to guard with or to print more defensive options whether it's blitz orders or just printing defensive effects on cards the one thing i do like though is that because they kind of kept this like the big power from v in that like a lot of decks can just like build like 30k columns you know things like that that ask for like 25k plus shield the nice thing is that already from these starter decks it feels as though the decks don't fold to a defensive like they did in early v where it's just, like you attack once you're putting checks defensive it's like oh well i guess my attacks don't hit anymore uh i guess i pass now it's like okay they hit a defensive but all your attacks are still asking for like 5k shield or 10k shield or 15k shield and therefore it doesn't feel as like you know like your entire turn gets shut down because of one defensive which i really really like and the fact that you can already feel that from just a starter decks also feels really really good the one thing with grade ones returning back to 5k shield is as i said earlier in v the 10k shield grade ones they were used more defensively and you wouldn't play them down if they have big like really good effects here now because they don't contribute to your defense that much you can actually be more aggressive with them you can play them down more make better columns with them more or just like go more aggressive in the early game by playing down those grade ones and so i think that perception to how you play with your grade one is going to change a lot if you're used to the v format and so definitely like pay attention to that as you play because i think you'll notice that you're going to be keeping grade ones in your hand thinking that they're 10k shield when they're really not overall it really does kind of feel like persona writing it does feel very decisive if your deck can like go through your deck by like drawing or getting extra drive checks to like access your persona right copies it feels like going to be pushing the offensive more and as i said before it feels like it can even counterbalance like getting sacked by triggers as well which i think is a good thing but the only thing where that becomes a problem is when one player always has persona rides in hand and the other one doesn't so i feel like the game might become like it might become a game of like oh did you draw persona right or not and what can you do without persona riding and things like that and so decks like dark states can still do a lot in their final rush turn even without the persona ride but it really adds a lot to their overall like ceiling and their scaling and power in general and so i kind of hope that the meta doesn't become like oh which deck can draw more and therefore do persona rides more i don't think it will because again there are decks like both keter and and dark stays in my opinion that have such high power that they don't need to rely on it as much to actually like finish off games and stuff but just from this playtesting these like dozen games or so it really felt like persona writing was very important in actually like keeping that aggression going and also pushing for game and of course the final note maybe something you expect me to talk about earlier is over triggers so over triggers of course we played with the cray elemental one so not the specific nation ones we only know the dragon empire one as of recording this video but we played with the regular one that comes in the starter decks and out of all those games it only really like won the game and but what i mean by won the game is like if i didn't check the over trigger my opponent would not have lost you know it was like checking that over trigger that they were like oh now i can't guard this anymore that they lost right so that only happened once every other situation it was either like checked early where the extra power didn't matter or it was just a fifth heal trigger that actually happened a few times where you just like check it and damage like oh i guess that heals otherwise you draw into them pretty often as well because as i said a lot of these effects already draw extra cards and stuff and therefore by drawing it it's a 50k shield which is nice you know it basically blocks any attack you want but it didn't feel as impactful as i would have expected i guess you know it's basically like the fifth heal definitely feels really good i think that's probably the best function of it when i over triggered for game that felt a little bit like oh like i wouldn't have won without this that feels a little bit bad and of course for my opponent also doesn't feel good either because they would have been able to guard everything else otherwise but i guess that's kind of the feel they want to get out of 
these over triggers so we're gonna see how it goes going forward but as i said you know these decks it feels like they're also designed to go through themselves pretty quickly and therefore i feel like you are gonna run into those situations where you do check over trigger for game every now and again but it didn't happen that often from all our testing and so you guys can again watch those games to see for yourselves as well all right so that's kind of my bare minimum about the gameplay itself i think i kind of went over my main thoughts about all the different things and kind of like how everything feels quite differently as well it's going to take you some time to get used to the fact that like the shields are lower and like how guarding works and the fact that you should be guarding like early attacks a lot more because the late game scaling is really really big and therefore a lot harder to guard outside of like pgs and like relying on the defensive buff to actually add on to your defensive power so like things like that i think will be figured out over time and people will kind of like figure out how to really like play in the sort of start deck meta but now let's talk about the actual product the actual start decks themselves so one thing we both notice is that each start deck already has quite a few like replaceable cards whether these are the vanillas or like in Branke, there's like several defensive cards or even like some of the ride deck cards in dragon empire like the extra 2k like the 12k attack the 10k attack on the grade one it doesn't really do that much and therefore it feels like those cards can really just like stay in the ride deck and get taken out otherwise so it really feels like these decks will change a fair bit in terms of the supporting cards when the booster set comes out but the core cards of the deck feels like they will stay the same you know like verina and nirvana and the grade one and two in the ride deck you know those will definitely stay the same and there's already like nice supporting cards in those starter decks that will probably stay around as well especially in dark states i feel like there's very little you need to replace like dark states feels like a really good deck with very few things that need to be changed it's just that some of them do feel like they have some cards that just like don't really need to be there or can be like anything else for that matter what i really like is that each deck has its existing win con like each deck has the grade three that more or less enables a win con or kind of like functions as part of the win con and things like that and so you have a win con to play to and you have cards that build up to it like again the best example i can give is dark states right you have cards that you know work when you're in final rush and therefore you want to keep them in your hand to actually have a really impactful final rush turn but you still want to push your opponent a little bit earlier so you have to choose what to call and so you're usually going to be calling cards that soul charge you know because you want to soul charge to be able to do the the final rush like restand your front row combo twice you know at least like two times in a row and so it feels like that deck in particular has like specific cards that build up to the win con aka the soul charging cards and then the cards that are the win con which are the final rush get 5k cards as well and therefore they add extra to your actual win con you know stuff like the gear colossus like the grade three that gains 15k power and soul charges that one in particular feels amazing for dark states so i really like that there's cards that you want to keep in your hand for the win con and then there's cards that you want to play early cards that you want to maybe guard with and things like that each deck sort of has those as well which i really really like and that you're like situationally kind of keeping cards not just like slamming everything down early because they just like search your deck for something or do something etc everything feels like it has a function and i really like that and i think that also a really amazing thing about these products again these are four dollar start decks like that blows my mind now what i really like is that there's already counterplay between the different start decks like there are actually certain start decks that have better matchups against others and there's basically really a matchup chart like Brankgate, for example doesn't really bear too well against certain ones but against magnolia against stoikea it's really good because they run out of soul quickly and you basically tell them to always kind of to free their stuff and you just kind of like drain them of resources while they have to call down a full field that you can always jail up whereas other matchups that don't call as many cards they can counter brand gate by only calling two cards all the time therefore they only jail two cards at a time and therefore they never get the extra drive check so i really like that there's like different matchups and like that like each start deck is favored in one matchup and like not favored in another one and that feels really really good honestly like that we have this kind of matchup chart just between the start decks is really nice and i think it's like each start deck i think there are better ones and worse ones and so i'm going to go over my thoughts on you know kind of how i think each of them rank uh amongst themselves for now but of course these will be changed once the booster set comes out you know the worst one could become the best one and stuff like that so this is just like in a vacuum of the star decks themselves so starting with dragon empire i would say that this is probably the weakest because the entire win con is three big swings basically per turn and basically like you can pump them up to like 30k power 40k with the actual persona ride but that's about it and then you essentially have arena that retires like once or twice per game and that retired feels good but not in insanely good either it doesn't feel as threatening compared to the other ones and feels a lot easier to deal with because it's like yeah you have like 30k swings three times but at the same time other decks kind of have that too without you know while also having like multi-attack and things like that and another thing is that overdress feels like it doesn't have much of a payoff like the mechanic of overdressing into Verena feels like it doesn't have much payoff like you basically have to discard one to revive a trick star if you don't have one already on the board otherwise if you have one that's great but then so you discard one to revive one so that's a plus minus zero but 
then you minus one from hand to literally play a card over a card. So it's still the same card, but it gets like a plus 10k buff, I guess, because it's in overdress state. So yeah, sure, that's great. You, instead of playing down a booster and an attacker, you just play down a big attacker. But then once you lose that from the field, you essentially lost two units at the same time too. So it just feels overall pretty bad. And I'm not sure how they're going to buff that in the future because... It's not like you can make it like Digimon or Fire Emblem Cypher where like from promoting or like from overdressing you draw a card because I think that would be a bit too much and you can definitely abuse that in the future. But I definitely want to see more support for this deck in particular. I feel like it really needs, it needs more payoff for what it does. Like it needs more payoff for overdressing because right now it's just like bigger power and that's it. Like it needs to be some sort of other payoff and hopefully Verina Valiente actually does do something along those lines. Dark States DSA. In my opinion, this is either the second or the best of the starter decks because as I said earlier, the only only bad part about this is that it has a vanilla turn three like on turn three you do basically nothing because you're only going to final rush at the start of your right phase so if you ride that turn into the violence bruise it doesn't go into final rush and you don't have five soul and you're not in final rush to actually do the restand combo so your turn three is vanilla you sometimes swing at rears with your vanguard and stuff like that to just like build up resources and like wait for the next turn to blow up in your opponent or you play down cards that soul charge to like build up to that win con next turn as well your entire deck either builds resources for that win con or function as cards to make your win con even stronger and i think that that is absolutely amazing this deck feels super good from the box already and i think there's very little they need to do to actually support it to make it even better keter sanctuary arguably the best one this one actually surprised me because a lot of people were saying beforehand that this one feels like the best one then i tested it, i was like wow this does feel like the best one because essentially people thought like oh but it doesn't have like grade ones and twos that much so obviously it has less defensive power yes but because everything is 5k shield now it doesn't feel like you're losing out on that much and instead you can focus on putting down all those grade threes as attackers and you're rewarded for having grade threes in your hand because your grade one calls the top card of your deck and if it's a grade three you're literally being able to push your opponent early not unlike any other deck and then grade two you draw an extra card so you're always ahead in cards the order draws you extra cards and powers up your board you have a rear guard that you can put into your soul to give another rear guard grade three rear guard plus 10k power and so you just distribute a bunch of power and then bastion restands one of them if you check a grade three which you oftentimes do and it just feels really really strong like this has insane big numbers always asking for like two card guards and every single attack and having to deal with that every single turn is just really heavy they can push the offense so much that the other decks just kind of like have to drop a lot of cards to guard or they have to just like you know take a bunch of damage and then try to clap back and it just gets pretty hard honestly and it's like you're mostly guarding in any of these decks you're mostly guarding with triggers to begin with and i mean Ketter has the same access to the same trigger, so it's not like that changes at all. So yeah, being able to do four attacks per turn that ask for like two card guards is pretty damn nuts in my opinion. It's really, really strong. Feels really good. It does have some bad matchups. I think because of how fast Stoikea is, it actually kind of like manages to win before Ketter gets out of hand. But overall, this one felt really strong and I was surprised by how good Ketter felt actually. Stoikea. So this is the fourth one. I feel like this one, the soul feels like an issue because everything soul blasts and nothing soul charges. So you have to like pick and choose basically. But I like because this one's very, very strong because it has a lot of like early aggro. You can choose to actually play a lot of cards down and just ag aggro your opponent from turn two already. But if you don't, then you're the ride deck cards actually just like, yeah, soul blast, you know, they call from the top deck or they soul blast the call to the top from the top deck. And it just feels like it generates a lot of resources for you and then you get the payoff with magnolia to just keep pushing it's the one that loses the defensives the most because their attacks don't really go beyond like 30k and above like other decks do and so therefore you're kind of in the situation where your attacks do kind of just like run into defensives potentially get shut down but if they don't the kind of like ceiling that you have is kind of like an axel deck to be honest like you have more attacks and therefore you are pushing more aggression and therefore against certain matchups you'll just have a better matchup in general because you are faster than them and so i think that this deck will will definitely be really good already from the box and it can easily become even better as time goes on and finally Brandgate I love this one a lot the Brandgate one feels really really fun to play you have grade ones that draw you extra cards you have the grade three that does triple drive which as I mentioned before helps you access more persona ride copies and therefore you're able to keep persona riding persona riding persona riding to have that extra buff to your front row have that extra aggression on top of controlling your opponent's board and taxing the opponent all the time to like soul blast or counter blast to get their units back is really good because some decks just like they eventually run out of resources in order to like always bring back their stuff but the biggest downside of this deck compared to any of the others is that it's the one that can be played around the most because due to seraph snow needing three cards in the prison your opponent can basically just like call two every turn and you just prison two you never get that extra drive check and so they can play around that extra drive check and therefore that feels a little bit bad and the worst part is they can also 
call stuff down that has amazing on-call effects, like the grade one from Brand Gate itself, Count Boss 1, Soul Boss 1 to draw is a really good effect, especially in the starter deck format. And so they can just keep calling that down and you're basically just like always like, oh, like if you imprison that, they can get it back and then use it. And that makes the mirror match pretty interesting as well, because then you're like over calling your own stuff to not give them the good cards to imprison and like they, they can recall and stuff like that. And so it's overall a very interesting deck, but it does feel like it can be, it can be played around. But even when they play around it, it doesn't feel like it's like the whole deck just like flops around and dies, you know? It's still really good. Even if you imprison just one thing, you can still like have the extra 10k on the Vanguard. And then as long as you can keep drawing cards and getting into more of the Persona Ride copies, it feels really, really good to play overall. And it has some nice defensive options already, which I think is pretty cool. Overall, this product is insane. The fact that all five of these starter decks come at $4 a piece and basically offer a complete package already in terms of just like getting into competitive play. Like these already have counterplays. These already have matchups. Like there's so much quality in these products. Obviously there's a lot that can be improved as well, but I'm honestly, I'm blown away by how good of a sealed product this is already. And now some improvements plus things I think that they're doing right. So I think, like I said earlier, I want more draw effects because it feels like the point of the game is going to become like who draws more Persona Ride copies. And I would rather there be more draw effects to help secure that rather than have people just like, oh, I sacked into a Persona Ride. You didn't. Well, GG's. And you also just have more shield in hand naturally if you allow the players to draw into more cards every turn. So I think that that is a good direction to go into. And it feels like for some decks, they are giving more of that card draw and natural plus as well. It feels like they're already experimenting with some defensive effects. Like there is the grade one that in brand that says like if you if you have an imprisoned card, it gets plus 5k shield when you guard with it. Or there's like the grade two in Dark States that says like when move to Guardian Circle, count must one to give it 5k. Those cards are really nice. And especially the latter one I really like because, you know, being able to use as an attacker or then like, you know, just like put it into the Guardian Circle Count Boss 1 and give it 5k shield is really nice. But I hope that when they print those defensive cards that they give them an offensive trade off as well, because the defensive effect has to be insanely good in order to justify running it over a offensive card. And so I think it's good also if they can kind of get a good balance of both or have a card that is both good offensively, like it literally just says like on play, draw a card or something, or, you know, like an effect that literally says like on plays do this. But then like when you intercept with it, it also like gets extra shield, stuff like that. I think when they print defensive effects they should explore those kind of spaces too obviously you want those like hyper offensive cards to just like gain extra power or like do other amazing effects but if you're going to print defensive cards they need to have some kind of trade-off in my opinion and they're kind of experimenting with it and i think they're on the right track so hopefully we see more of that going into the booster set a lot of the decks right now already in the starter decks themselves have ways to power up to get over defensives and i really like that i hope that they keep doing that but not too much to the point that it's like impossible to guard you know there's a limit to everything and i feel like they they respected that limit really well in the Star decks themselves. Just don't break past it too much because otherwise it might become a little bit of an issue. But overall, this is really, really well done. Like there's not that many things I want to say. Like the card economy definitely needs to be improved as well, as I said, but these are really great starting products and it kind of feels like the G trial decks where you like the main grade three stayed the main grade three of the deck for like almost the entirety of the G era. And I can really see that with these starter decks as well. And so I'll be really happy if we can like take these starter decks and just like put in grade twos, put in grade ones and like supporting cards that like make the grade three stronger and make the win con stronger. And so I look forward to that being kind of like the design space where they can like print support cards for the archetypes that they print and then also introduce other new archetypes for each nation on top of that. that maybe even mesh well with the existing cards for each different nation overall like this product is honestly amazing and i'm really really impressed with what they're doing with these start decks so if you want to have a go at them yourself on my discord in the game room text channel you can find a pin to a rar file with all the pictures and the tts files that you can use to import them into tabletop simulator and actually play with these decks already so if you want to give them a go you can already mess around with them in tabletop simulator and have some fun with it because that's how we've been doing it ourselves but on that note that's going to be basically it for me today hope you guys enjoyed today's video so i'm really pumped for overdose going forward there's still a lot of really cool stuff you know for v that's happening as well that i'll be focusing on more so until the v booster set comes out but until then honestly this has been really really cool and i'm definitely liking what i'm seeing so i'm very very pumped for overdose going forward anyway that's gonna be it for me today hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye